and welcome to the Vaults of Terror. My name is Ed and today we're going to be continuing our Space Marines chapters videos by having a look at the Space Marine chapter that has been most requested this time round, the Dark Angels. Now, the Dark Angels are a pretty cool chapter, I must admit. Despite being a Blood Angels fan, the Dark Angels have some really interesting lore surrounding them, so what's going to happen is I'm probably going to break these down into about three or four videos of a little bit shorter than usual length, so I can get them out a little bit more regularly for you guys. So let's get started, shall we? Now, the Dark Angels were actually the first of the legions that were founded by the Emperor, and their Primarch is Lion L. Johnson, which is actually an anagram of Lionel Johnson, who wrote the poem Dark Angel in the real world. The Dark Angels were loyal to the Emperor during the Horus Heresy, and after the Heresy, the legion was later reorganised into its current chapter, along with several other second founding chapters. Now, the current master is Asriel, and their home world is actually the destroyed world of Caliban. Now, their home is actually the Rock, the fortress monastery slash space station that is made from a piece of the original Caliban. Now, their armour before the Horus Heresy was black, but it became green at some later date. However, in the Deathwing, which is the first company of the Dark Angels, the armour is actually a beige bone colour, and in the Ravenwing, which is the second company of the Dark Angels, they have the black armour, which is retained from the Horus Heresy. Now, to clarify, the Deathwing are the Terminator veterans, and they also hunt the Fallen, who I will get into later, and the Ravenwing are one of the fast attack options of the Dark Angels, and ride around also hunting the Fallen. If you've ever read the book Ravenwing, I highly recommend it. Again, I'm not being sponsored by the Black Library. And, of course, the battle cry of the Dark Angels is REPENT FOR TOMORROW YOU DIE! Now, I must admit, I've always found that a little bit redundant, seeing as if they're going to kill them tomorrow, what's the point in crying that in battle? Anyway, moving on, we want to talk a little bit about the Great Crusade and the history of the Dark Angels. Now, as usual, I'm not going to go into too much detail in this video about the history, because obviously the Horus Heresy videos will be coming up, so I don't want to go into too much detail and spoil them. But I can reveal that the Dark Angels were, of course, the first founding legion created by the Emperor, and were reunited with Lionel Johnson after the Emperor arrived on Caliban, where Lionel had been living since he was cast out by the Dark Powers of the Warp from the Emperor's laboratory. He was brought up by a man named Luther who had discovered him in the forests of Caliban, and would later become his teacher, mentor, and brother in an Order of Knights. As Caliban was a medieval era culture at that time, although they had some advanced weaponry and some advanced armour that can be seen in some of the Horus Heresy books. Now, the First Legion were actually named the Dark Angels after Luther recited a passage from a Caliban legend, which told of great righteous heroes who held back black monsters with black painted armour, as was the armour of the Dark Angels. Now, Caliban was of course made the homeworld of the Dark Angels at this point, and every member of the Order which Lion governed became Astartes, either modified human or full Legion Astartes space marines, if they were young enough. Now, they then set out on the Great Crusade, but Luther returned to Caliban with many of the Dark Angels' psychers, as Lion didn't exactly trust the psychers and wanted Luther to take command of the garrison on Caliban in order to train them and keep the flow of Dark Angels recruits up to the front lines. Now, during the Horus Heresy, the Dark Angels weren't actually present at the Siege of Terror, they were too far away on the eastern fringes, and actually they were intercepted by the Night Lords, who were sent by Horus in order to delay the Dark Angels and stop them from intervening. However, the Night Lords were actually beaten rather soundly by Lion and his Dark Angels, and they hurried to Terror, but they did not arrive before the confrontation between Horus and the Emperor, and in fact the end of the siege itself. Now, this isn't actually the end of the story for the Dark Angels during the Horus Heresy era, as actually, after they left Terra, mopping up a lot of the traitors who were left in the system, they returned to Caliban to replenish their numbers and recruit. However, they discovered that Caliban had actually been corrupted by Chaos, as Luther, who was incredibly jealous of Lion, had turned to the Dark Powers in order to try and gain back some of the honour he felt he was being denied. Now, of course, the Dark Angels fleet was attacked by the planetary defence forces of Caliban, and so the Lion had to teleport down to Caliban and face Luther himself in order to try and wrestle back control, and cut off the head of this rebellion in the Dark Angel's own ranks. Now, of course, Lion, although he was renowned for his fighting skill, was actually so close to Luther and thought of him as a brother where he was unable to strike Luther down. However, Luther, in his chaos-induced rage, was able to strike Lion, dealing him a very serious blow. After doing this, Luther was actually struck by sudden insanity, realising that he had betrayed his friend and that the forces of chaos had manipulated him. 
Now, of course, the Chaos Gods were hardly very happy with the fact that they'd lost another pawn in this human game, and so they actually opened a warp rift, teleporting away many of the Dark Angels who had betrayed Lion, drawing them away into the warp through both time and space. At the time that Luther and Lion were actually dueling, the planet was being assaulted from orbit by the Dark Angels fleet, who had destroyed the planetary defence forces and were actually bombarding the planet out of anger and rage at the traitors who had risen there. Now, when the warp rift opened and pulled away the traitorous Dark Angels, the planet was actually ripped apart by the combined forces of the warp rift and the bombardment, leaving Caravan a floating asteroid field. All that was left was rubble, and the only major piece that was left was the Tower of Angels, the fortress monastery of the Dark Angels. When they arrived in this void shielded location, all the loyalists found was Luther, insane from the conflict, and gibbering that the lion had been taken. Now the Dark Angels had to reconstruct themselves from this great tragedy, however due to the distance from Terra and only Dark Angels being present at the time of the rebellion, only Dark Angels knew of this destruction, and only the most elite company commanders, sergeants and captains really knew that the he- really knew what the tr- really knew what had happened and what sort of treachery had been perpetrated. Even amongst these, only the very, very senior knew that Luther was still alive, and is to this day sealed in what remains of the Tower of Angels, which later became converted into the Flying Fortress Monastery, which is known as the Rock. From that day, the Dark Angels consider themselves stained by the treachery of their brothers. They named their traitorous kin the Fallen, and vowed to hunt them all to the very end of existence, to force them to repent their sins and cleanse the state upon the Dark Angel's honour. To this very day, that is their goal, to hunt the galaxy for the Fallen, and although they take part in the conflicts of the Imperium, their main aim is to find the Fallen and force them to repent. They believe only that will allow the Lion to return and lead them to glory again. Of course, because they do not want others to find the Fallen, they are very secretive, known as one of the most secretive chapters of the Space Marines. Thus they and their descendants, the Unforgiven Chapters, hunt and also destroy any information about the Fallen, including normal Imperial citizens or even fellow Space Marines, anyone who could reveal their secret and cause them incredible scrutiny and even punishment when they try to redeem themselves. That is all I actually wanted to mention today about the Dark Angels. I know it's very brief, it's only an overview of their history, but I just wanted to give you a flavour of what they have been through to take them to this point where they are now the dark green angels of repentance as opposed to the black armoured angels of death that they were at the very beginning of the Great Crusade. Now, I'll go into more detail next time on a little bit of their culture, organisation, and some of their equipment. Now, I just wanted to mention many of you will have seen our new intro, which is by Stealth Shock. Thank you, Stealth Shock, for doing that for me. I didn't even ask for it. The guy just came up and said, I have a new intro for you, and it is spectacular. So thank you, Stealth Shock. Give all the love to him, and we'll hope to continue in this new vein of slightly better video assets. Now, that's everything I wanted to mention in this video. See you next time on the Vaults of Terror.